The following video was recorded in June 2020 as part of our virtual open day. The information in the video was correct at the time of recording. For more information on these programs, to arrange a one-to-one -one discussion with a member of the team, or to apply online, please visit newbury-college.ac.uk. Good afternoon, Sean. Hi, I'm Dean. Can't really join me lecture at Newbury College. I'm joined by Lee. And I'm the other country and joining lecturer at, at Newbury College. So at Newbury College we offer level one, level two and level three can't be in join room. So we are progression focused. This isn't a DIY course. The idea of this course is to get people actually working in industry as a qualified partner. We do have employers regularly um, come into the college and obviously speak to us. And we do um, let uh, learners out into the workplace um, to get the experience. So the course is split in new knowledge, which is theory and practical, which is the practical stuff in the workshop. It's roughly five lessons in the workshop and two theory. So it's seven lessons a week, five practical and two theory. It's mainly to get your hand skills up together because that's where you get your money from. If you look at the uh, um, the board above you, it shows that you can actually in two to three years get your career going. If you are a six, six form, um, you go in six form, it's going to be two years then and then you've got three to four years at university and paying those sort of fees where if you go to college or the apprenticeship side, it's easier, quicker and a lot better to get your career on track. A lot of um, employers now want you to have some sort of background rather than just have the theory side. So it's made up of four sections, vocational qualifications, which is the can't mean join side of things, the practical side, maths and English, which if you achieve a four or higher, you will not have to resit. If you get less than that in either maths or English, you will have to resit that while you're at college. There's also an entry uh, requirement for level one, which is a three, in English and math. If you don't have that, you'll have to do an extra year, which is the entry level of carpentry before you go on to level one. I mean, if you have if you have got an employer and you can come to college and do an MBQ, it is the best um, way to go. But if you cannot find an employer, come to the college. We we'll help you to find one. Uh, by getting your CV up together, put, pointing in the right uh, direction. And we have a lot of advice and guidance here at the college enabling you to actually find work in the construction industry. So there's lots to do with the college. There is the college gym, which is just relocated. It was quite small. We've now got a bigger gym that's £10 a year. Um, we've got a fully equipped library, drop-in sessions for computers if you need to use that. We have an on-site Starbucks, which is cheaper than a standard Starbucks. Street diner, hot and cold food, shows and exhibitions, special projects, various projects. We we'll try and do a lot in the community. So we'll be doing different projects for local charities and other stuff in the local community. Student council, so this is what student voice learners can put their points across, what they want, what they feel we're doing good at, what they feel we could do better. Uh, student discount, Sean. Can you talk a little bit about what's available, please? Yep. So uh, as a member of the college, people can sign up to Uni Days, uh, which we are affiliated with, and then they can get discounts on all sorts of things, clothing, technology, uh, trips to the cinema once it opens again. Um, I think they can also use it against uh, tools and work related clothing as well um, at certain places. So yeah, definitely worth having between 10% and sometimes up to about 40 or 50% off certain retailers. Yeah, thank you, Sean. Trips and visits, so throughout the year we'll be going on various trips. Um, we've just recently visited a local building site. There's other sort of um, museums, stuff like that. Tutorials, that sort of employability skills. We work on CVs, mock interviews. Uh, again, that links with the work related activity work placements, etc. OK, uh, programmes are built into the courses to find you work. So basically we are looking for you, once you're here, to find employment in the industry. 
we think carpentry is the best industry to go into. This is just my opinion, it's my colleagues as well. Um, once you've got the hand skills, no one can take that away from you. So we think that carpentry is by far the best trade to be in. So we do have a, a job coach team who will be trying to find your work placements. These are from two to nine weeks in length. We do provide bus fares and there's also a food allowance as well. But there'll be sort of various points throughout the course. So you, you won't just be doing it at the start. You might do one at the start and someone else might be doing it later on. So it'll be throughout the course, you'll be doing the work placements. So the idea of the level one is basically to develop your hand skills, get your cutting straight, get your measuring, using the hand tools, making frames, basic joints, stuff like that. The level two is a bit more varied. You'll be doing stuff like hanging doors, fitting staircases, stud walls, uh, flooring, roofing, fitting kitchens, all that sort of stuff. So the skills you've learned in the level one, how to cut straight, how to measure, you'll be using those skills for practical tasks in the level two. And the level three expands that. You'll be, instead of single doors, you'll be fitting double doors. You'll be doing hip roofs instead of standard roofs. Um, so you will be going a little bit further with that. Employers, and level, sorry, level three might be changing in the next couple of years due to T levels coming in, which basically means that you will have to spend so much time actually in the workshop while you're doing the career, while you're doing the college course as well, which obviously will expand the course a little bit, but it gives you so much more knowledge and ability to actually walk into that trade in the end of the three years. Yeah, as opposed to the smaller work placements, as part of the T level, it is a compulsory element. So you'll be doing uh, 415 hours, I believe, uh, of work placement. Next slide, please. So in the workshop, you must wear boots. That's non-negotiable. We've got all the tools you need to do right through to level three. Some learners do prefer to bring their own tools. They sort of start to build up their own tune collection as they go along. That's not necessary, but we do we do encourage that if, if you want to. We find, we find that the, the, the uh, students who actually bring their own tools in, they work with them a lot easier. They keep them sharp and their ability gets very, very better. And it gives them an opportunity to them do jobs for parents, for grandparents and to people they know. So visits to trips, like I said, we'll be doing site visits, stuff like that, going out to building sites. And there will be opportunities for you to actually get work experience with those employers as well. We also did a recent trip assessment. So there's two, no, go on, continue. So the assessment, there'll be the workshop assessments, whereas you will practice tasks. And then when the tutor and the learner is happy, you were both, we both ready for the assessment, we'll put you in for the assessment. It'll be timed, you'll have a set criteria and you will then do the assessment. As for the theory assessments, it is online exams, multiple choice, there's six throughout the year. What we'll do is we'll learn about a unit and then you do the exam. So it's not one big exam at the end, you'll learn about something, then you'll do that end of unit exam and then you've got the next one. And there's the different levels uh, that you can start from. We do start now with an entry level. So if you do end up with have no qualifications whatsoever or didn't do that well at school, but still want to come to college, come and speak to us. We can start you on the entry course and then you progress up to level one, level two and level three, and then hopefully straight into a, a employment. Well, some of my friends who still work in the industry are, are hitting 45 to 50K a year. And there's not many jobs that would give you that sort of money. So, Come along to Newby College and get enrolled. And beyond level three, we have got the higher education, which could be a uh, site manager, clerk of works, quantity surveyor, stuff like that. So we're here to help. Myself and Lee are very friendly, we're very approachable. But we also have learning support for those that need it in the class. There's the progression coaches, which can help um, with employability stuff as well. Any questions? If you want to contact us, you can either email us or obviously phone the college or have a go now. Is there any, anybody out there? Oh, hello, Lee. Yes, hello. We, uh, we do have some questions. I'm just going to send you live. So uh, one of the questions here. So I understand there's different types of carpentry. So you can you can do furniture making or you can work on site. What 
what kind of angles do you try to push people towards? Well, level one is mainly to do with carpentry and joinery. Now, carpentry is what a carpenter, what somebody would do on site. So they would hang doors, put staircases in, put roofs on, where a joiner would actually make things in an actual factory or workshop conditions. So he might make staircases, he might go on to make doors. So he's actually making things rather than installing things. And that's the difference between the two. But because of the college and the way that Newbury is sort of based, we actually do in level two, just to site carpentry, which is basically on site uh, installing doors, uh, staircases, roofs, skirting boards, everything that you've got in, in your house to do with timber. Excellent, so it's, it's much more focused towards building sites and yeah. and the construction of houses as opposed to factory work and assembly work. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we've got a question here. Will I need my own tools? Now, I think you've, you've mentioned that already, haven't you? And, and the fact yeah. that you don't have to, but you do need them. Roughly what kind of price uh, or cost well, would people be I looking at? I always say to the learners or students, don't actually buy your tools. Go into your granddad's shed, go into your dad's shed. There might be rusty old chisels, rusty old saws, rusty old hammers, but steel is most of the higher quality in your, in your granddad's shed than you can purchase today. So a lot of the old tools that your dad, that might be a little bit rusty, are so much better. A lot of people where well, I've got over the years go to car boot sales. They pick up the tools there. So really and truthfully, you can get a good kit of tools, but really not much money spent at all. Excellent. So they don't have to go down to B&Q and um, buy brand new toolkit. No. Um, Some of the old tools are so much better. We can also offer advice on that as well. If they're after any tools, they can come to us and we can give them advice and point them in the right direction on what they need. We can a lot of the chisels to one of with well, a part of one of their courses to sharpen the chisels. So even if they're really, really blunt, we can we've got the facilities for the for you, for the students to actually sharpen them at Newbury College. Thank you. Uh, will students be able to start their own business after they've done this? Will they be able to go out on their own, self-employed? Yeah, once you've achieved level three, you'll be fully qualified and you will be able to if you want to start your own business. I would personally suggest that you work with someone for a few years just to develop your skills a bit further. But there's certainly no reason why you can't do that. You will have the full range of knowledge to do everything you need to do as a partner at level three. Thank you. Uh, are there many apprenticeship opportunities around the local area in carpentry? It can be very, very hard. Over the years, what I have found, the students who really want to get an apprenticeship do get one, you, but you've got to do something about it. No one is going to come and knock on your door. So while you're here, we can give you the advice of what to do, where to do. A lot of students actually go and put, make uh, uh, a poster up and they go into local uh, uh, builders merchants and put it on their counter. So any sort of builders, carpenters go in there, they can actually see their, see, see what, what is involved and what, you know, what they're looking for. So would you suggest that they maybe come here, do the level one, level two course, uh, get those underpinning skills and then use that to sell themselves to an employer who no, may I, put them? No, I would say straight away, look at the apprenticeship, find one if you can. Uh, use, use me college, once you're here, you should be still looking for employment um, in the carpentry side. So you should be, we're, that's why we help you. That's why we got so much support to getting your CV up together, to getting your letters on board, to finding out where to send them to. And that's what you should be. And what we what we aim to support you here, why you're here. Excellent. Also the way an apprenticeship works, you don't have to, it doesn't have to start in September. So if you've got an apprenticeship halfway through the course, you just immediately transfer to the apprenticeship course. Oh, brilliant. So, so people don't have to make that decision straight away. No. So you would suggest apply for the, the full time course now, make sure they and get that application off. in and then they can start looking for an apprenticeship you know, straight away. And if they don't get one yeah. till October, November, whatever, they, it exactly. doesn't matter. Yeah. 
Uh, really? Some employers actually prefer to take someone on who's done a course or is actually in the course of that present time because then they realize that they actually like it. Because if they take somebody on who hasn't done any carpentry, there's no guarantee that the person will actually like what they're actually doing. Yeah, that, that's a very good point. Um, do the students need a CSCS card uh, to work on site? Depending on the ha what company they work for will depend on if they want a CSCS card. It's not mandatory, so a lot of small builders will not require a CSCS card. But if you're going on site to a large uh, construction company, most do require a, a CSCS card. Now it is it's a day's course and then you take an online test. It's usually about £110 with the training. OK, and that's something they can do after uh, finishing the course with you. Yes, they can do it and they can do it any time. While they're doing, doing the course, they can do, they can actually do the CCS card. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I think that is all of the, I'm just looking through them here. That's all of the questions that we've got for you. So uh, I will send myself back live. And uh, I would like to say a big thank you to Dean and to Lee for joining us today. Yeah. And telling us more about carpentry. Um, I've certainly learned a lot and if you get your application in now you will learn a lot so go to our website newbury-college.ac.uk forward slash open day where you can watch this again share it with your friends or click the course button to view the carpentry courses uh, once you've made your application we will get in touch with you lee and or dean will be able to discuss those options see what level you uh, should be coming in at what's the most appropriate one for you. We look forward to seeing you hopefully very soon, uh, but for now, thank you very much and goodbye.